The following is an OCF investigation. That's right. Have to break out the old OCF investigative hat. To look into this subject today, as I've been told by a few people, that my mentioning of the Big 12 officiating crew was maybe having a wink-wink deal with the Big 12 brass to make sure that Texas and Oklahoma don't really catch any breaks in their last few years in the Big 12. May have some legs. Let's talk about it. Here we go again. Another episode of the OCF. That's the outlaw of college football. That's me, JPC. I can also be found on Twitter at OCF Productions. That's right. Now, I'm going to get right into this. You know, in a a video, a couple of videos back when I done my um, college football scenarios and whatnot, I mentioned that Oklahoma and the Texas Tech game had probably been jobbed a little bit by the officiating crew. No surprise, because the Big 12 officiating crew has been pretty much a shit show all year. A shit show for the most part of the last couple of years. But this year, more profoundly, because of the exit of one Oklahoma and Texas. Now, there was also a case of where there was probably a field goal that was made by Oklahoma to tie that game against Texas Tech. A phantom missed field goal, I'll call it. The phantom missed field goal by Oklahoma has sort of punctuated this whole thing. You know, like I said, I don't normally drag out the officiating, but this year has been very troubling across the board, not just the Big 12. It's been everywhere, and I've said before, and I've said a thousand times, these guys need to be employed full-time. That way they'll be more motivated to do a better job. They're getting better pay and and maybe some benefits. And during the off-season, when there's not a football season going on, they can take classes on the new rules in place or maybe just do a refresher course on the old rules. Also, they can help train high school officials that are aspiring to be college officials college football officials, and one day, maybe even NFL officials. But I got a few um, graphs that I'm going to throw up here in just a few seconds. They were sent to me by one of our loyal listeners, uh, one of the best common Joes in South and O, Heath Stokes, sent me these graphs. And basically, in this first one here, got a little, got some notes here. 2022, Texas Big 12 opponents only had two holding penalties for the whole year. Now, how is that possible? And that's that's pretty profound in saying that, hey, this ain't just disgruntled fans bitching and complaining because their team lost about officiating. Two holding calls all year is, I mean, if it was two holding calls in just one game, I could understand it maybe, or two holding calls in just the last three or four games. But the whole freaking year? and yeah, something don't smell right. Also, this is even worse. Oklahoma only had one holding call in their favor this year in Big 12 games out of 741 snaps. One out of 741. You mean to tell me that there was no holding in 741 snaps, but just one time? Like I said, I'm not the one. I, I used to be the one to be like, hey, if you're using officiating as an excuse for whatever happened to you, uh, you're just grasping for straws. The, the, the game is not going to be dictated upon that because it'll eventually even itself out somewhat down the road if not in that game, down the road in a few other games. But this is astronomical. This is a stat that can't be ignored. And this is why I've said before, and I'm going to say it again, 
that the Big 12 and the Oklahoma and Texas people, they need to part ways immediately. And for the Big 12 to continue to hang on to Oklahoma and Texas when they don't want to be a part, it's just not cool. I can understand them holding on to them and, and trying to get as much money as they can out of them for the little TV deal and whatnot. But if you're not going to present a fair and unbiased field of play for Texas and Oklahoma, then they should have some kind of legal recourse in this. This should this these stats should be shown in any kind of legal action they take. Also, and this is one thing I've never understood, they invited four new teams in that Texas and Oklahoma did not sign a deal with in their little grand rights or whatever the hell it's called that they're holding on to to try to cling on and not let go of Texas and Oklahoma. BYU is probably that was probably a pretty good steal by, by the Big 12. But overall, Cincinnati, UCF, Houston, over a course of over 80 to 100 years of college football, they're not much to talk about, okay? And Texas and Oklahoma shouldn't be forced to play them. They did not sign a deal with them. And the and the, the lawyers and all this should be able to find a loophole in this. And I know Texas and Oklahoma have been trying to be cordial about this. But you got wiener-faced little programs like Kansas State and TCU who are in the championship game, the Johnny Come Lately's, Oklahoma State, and the little spastic ass coach Mike Gundy. I'm a man. I'm 55 now. I'm a man. I'm 70. I'm retiring in 15 years from Oklahoma State, probably because they don't care. They always don't care about football because their coaches only beat their in-state rival three times out of. 18 times. Was he 3 and 15? Yeah. So, to the Big 12 people out there, you would do yourself a favor by letting these two programs go. Quit worrying about that stupid ass Grand White shit, man. Y'all got a new TV deal. Y'all got four new programs coming in. BYU has won a national championship before. They were the last non Power 5 conference to win a national championship. Take those four teams, build your new future, and create you another traditional power. Because since Oklahoma and Texas is gone, someone's got to take over. Let TCU start getting their legs. Kansas State, BYU, whomever. UCF's got the biggest enrollment in America almost. Slap down in the middle of Orlando, in the middle of Florida with all that recruiting base. Y'all move on, man. Quit holding on to Texas and Oklahoma and try to present an unfair, unfair field of play, an unfair level of sportsmanship. If that's going to go on, then Texas and Oklahoma shouldn't have to pay y'all shit to get out of the conference. Y'all can complain and whine about it all you want. I can hear it now from John Kurtz and all these other Big 12 diehards. Oh, no, y'all can either pay us or y'all not going to leave. Y'all going to stay here, and we're going to call one holding call out of 741. I'm glad y'all feel good about that. Because if it was me, I'd feel like a big old coochie coo. That's what y'all are, man. Y'all a bunch of coochie coos, man. Y'all a bunch of little little sissies, man, that just want to hold on to somebody so bad, man. It's like a scorned relationship between a man or a woman that don't want to let go of one or the other. But, man, just, I don't know, it just gets me a little irate because even though it's not my team, I wouldn't want that shit happen to my team. Uh, you just got to put yourself in another person's shoes, man. Yeah, Oklahoma and Texas probably should have been more on the up and up about it. But they're leaving. Does it matter if they want to up and up about it? They were going to leave regardless. It don't really matter because in the end, y'all just want an unfair advantage. Texas and Oklahoma dominated y'all for so long and emasculated y'all for so long that y'all want to take some kind of jab at them before they leave the conference. And that's all I got to say about that. You guys can ask him what you think about all this. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And as always, KMCA to all the other teams. Class is now officially dismissed.